Up until now, we've created a retrofit service to communicate with the weather API and we also created all of the pieces needed for a local database using the Room library. So we basically have all of the data components of our app implemented, right? We can fetch data and then cache it locally, so all that's left to do is to put it all in a repository to somehow centralize network and local data calls. Well, while we are really close to creating a repository, we still have one important step unfinished, and that is that we need to wrap the retrofit where API service into a special class to create an abstraction and to give the code making network calls a better structure. Hello, welcome to ResoCoder and first let's check out our current state of the app. So when we have a network connection going, LTE is connected on an emulator and I launch the app, it launches just fine and it's perfect, right? Everything works. We can see the current weather response, which is pulled from the server. But when I close the app and turn off the network connection and then launch the app, as you can see, forecast and VVM has stopped. Why is that? Well, the answer is simple. We don't have an internet connection and whenever we are trying to fetch data from the API for our weather, we don't have no data connection, so the app crashes. Obviously, there has to be some kind of a way to go around this issue because you have multiple apps on your phone probably at this precise moment and they also depend on the network connection being present, for example, Facebook, right? But when you open the Facebook app or the YouTube app, it doesn't crash. It just shows you that there is no internet connection, so it somehow handles it and then only lets the user know that he should or she should launch the network connection, for example, Wi-Fi or LTE. While in this tutorial, we are now going to notify the user that he needs to enable an internet connection, we will at least prevent the app from crashing. Let's check out the AppixuWare API service, which we built in the previous parts. And over here, you can see that we are adding an interceptor to the OKHttp OK client and the interceptor is the one which adds our API key to each and every query that we make. We are going to build a very similar interceptor right now, but it will not add anything to the query, but it will rather check if we have an internet connection currently, and if we don't, it will throw an exception, and then later on we can catch that exception whenever we are actually calling the epic Sewer API service. And whenever an exception is caught, we have the power to not let the app crash. So let's open up app and then Java, the first package, data and then network.response and let's create a new interface over here and its name will be connectivity interceptor. Currently this connectivity interceptor interface is added under the network.response package but we want to move it only to the network package and not under the response which is under network. So just drag the connectivity interceptor to any kind of package for example data itself and then we are going to change the package from data to say dot network and not dot response. And now when we hit refactor, we have this response package separated from the network. So it's no longer network dot response, but the response is an actual folder, so to say under network. And then we have also connectivity interceptor under network itself. We've created this interface connectivity interceptor only because we are later on going to use it with a dependency injection. But for now, we are not going to be implementing dependency injection. However, if you want to learn more about dependency injection with coding for Kotlin on Android, even before we get to it in this tutorial series, you can do so by clicking on the card in the corner. This interface will implement another interface, which is Interceptor from OKHttp3. OK now, let's create an actual implementation for this interface and let's do it through a quick uh, function of Android Studio. So just go over to Interface and hover over it and you will have this light bulb over here. 
and we want to implement interface. So we just click on this and its name will be Connectivity Interceptor IMPL, which stands for implementation and it's going to be under the network package too. So let's create it and let's also override all of the possible functions. So first, our connectivity interceptor will need to have an instance of context. This is because we need the context to get a system service, which will tell us whether or not we have the internet connection enabled. But we don't want to have a reference to any kind of context. We want to play it safe and have a reference only to the app context. So we are going to create a private val app context which will be equal to context, which is this uh, constructor parameter. And from this context, we want to get application context. So even if this context is an activity, we are going to get an application context from it. And whenever the activity or the fragment here is destroyed, our app context will remain intact because it's referencing the whole app and not only the component which is fragment or activity. Now let's create a helper function is online and it will return how else a boolean and over here we first want to get the connectivity manager which will be equal to app context and we want to get system service. The name of the system service is connectivity service and it's a constant under context. So context.connectivity service and we want to cast it as connectivity service or manager actually. Then we want to get the network info from this connectivity manager. So connectivity manager dot active network info. And right away we can see that we have a missing permission because the Android Studio is intelligent enough to notify us about this. So we want to go over to Android manifest, copy this line, use this permission, paste it below, but this time we want to have access network state. Now this error should be gone. And from this is online helper function, we want to return a boolean from a boolean expression, which will be if network info is not null and also network info that is connected. So if it is null or it is not connected, it's going to be false. And now in the intercept function, we want to have an if statement. So if not is online, and if we are not online, we want to throw a new exception. And an exception that we throw must be an IO exception. So we could throw something like this directly. But this is not a good practice because when you are throwing a custom exception, it should really be a custom exception. This way you know which kind of an exception it is because IO exception doesn't say much, right? However, if we have something like no connectivity exception, whenever we see it in the log file, we know, oh, we don't have an internet connection because no connectivity exception conveys more information than just IO exception. So let's create our custom exception class, but we are not going to do it in this file directly. We are going to actually create a separate package and a separate file for that, for all of the exceptions. The package will be called internal. So under the root package of our project, we are going to create a new package internal. And under internal, we want to have a file for exceptions. So new Kotlin file exceptions. And over here, we simply want to create a class, no connectivity exception, and it will be a subclass of the aforementioned IO exception. So now let's come back to connectivity interceptor implementation. And instead of IO exception, we want to throw here no connectivity exception. And otherwise, if we are online and we don't throw any kind of an exception, we want to simply return chain dot proceed and we want to proceed with the request that is currently in the chain so chain dot request all right now that we have this connectivity interceptor implemented we can go to our apixu weather api service and add an interceptor over here so we can write that at interceptor 
and we could technically do it like this. So just instantiate a connectivity interceptor implementation directly over here and then pass in a context, right? But this is not a good practice at all because it creates tight coupling. So what if, for example, we want to swap the implementation of our connectivity interceptor to one that always throw exceptions? No matter what the current network condition is, we always want to throw an exception, right? With this approach, we would need to physically swap this line of code to create or instantiate a different instance of the connectivity interceptor. For example, one that is called connectivity interceptor always throws an exception, right? We would need to manage these dependencies ourselves, but we don't want to manage dependencies ourselves when we have beautiful libraries like Codin or even Dagger, which can manage dependencies for us. So we aren't going to instantiate the implementation directly over here. Instead, we are going to use a dependency injection. And while we are not going to implement the dependency injection in this tutorial, we are at least going to prepare our code to work with dependency injection once we implement it. And implementation of it will be coming in just a few tutorials in the future. So definitely subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button if you don't want to miss that. For now, just let's prepare our code to work with DI. So instead of instantiating implementations directly, we are only going to pass them to this invoke function and we are going to pass them through the interface. That is precisely why we have even created this pretty much useless interface. It's only useful because we are using dependency injection. So we want to have a connectivity interceptor passed over here of type connectivity interceptor interface. And then over at at interceptor, we want to pass in the connectivity interceptor, which is passed to this function. All right, so now that we have all of this implemented, we could basically go to current weather fragment where we have currently a working but not really cool implementation of the data fetching implemented. And because we are throwing an exception whenever there is no internet connection, we would just need to wrap this code in a try and catch statements and then catch the exception and uh, possibly notify the user that he or she should enable network. But we aren't going to do that directly. We are rather going to create another class, which will be weather network data source. Weather network data source will be an abstraction on top of the Apixu weather API service. So whenever we are requesting data, we don't need to deal with Apixu weather API service directly. And also all of the exception handling will be done in that weather network data source and not in the client code. So let's create that weather network data source right now under the network package. We want to create a new interface precisely for the same reason as we created the interface for connectivity interceptor because we are using dependency injection. So weather network data source. And I just noticed that a Pixu weather API service is not under the network package. So let's correct that really quickly by dragging it over to network. Now this weather network data source interface will have a val downloaded current weather which will be of type live data and the generic type of live data will be current weather response. Then this interface will also have a suspending function fetch current weather and it will accept a location string and also a language code also of type string. And what you can notice here is that contrary to the epic sewer API service where we are returning the current weather response directly from the function which is called, which name is get current weather. Here in weather network data source, we aren't returning the current weather response directly from the function. This function will only update the downloaded current weather live data, which can then be observed for changes. And the observing will happen in a repository class, which is not currently implemented. So this will create somehow a strange kind of asynchronous code where fetch current weather will now return the current weather response directly, but it will only update downloaded current weather, which can then be observed. And all of this will happen in an asynchronous manner. 
So now let's create an implementation for this weather network data source precisely in the same way as before. So hover over interface or somewhere hover over it and here we have the light bulb and we want to implement an interface. This implementation of weather network data source will have one constructor property which will be private val a Pixu weather API service and over in fetch current weather we want to have a try catch block so try and we want to try to fetch the current weather from the Pixu weather API service so val fetch current weather is equal to a Pixu weather API service dot get current weather and we want to get it for the location and also language code which is passed to fetch current weather function and then we want to await. Then we want to update the downloaded current weather with the value which was fetched from the API which is currently stored in fetched current weather. But here's the problem. We cannot update downloaded current weather. So we cannot say downloaded current weather dot post value because downloaded current weather is only live data and live data cannot be changed only mutable live data can be changed. So let's create a mutable live data, which will be kind of a backing field or backing property for the downloaded current weather, which is only a live data, which is not mutable. So private val underscore and then downloaded current weather. And this will be equal to mutable live data of type current weather response and also instantiate this mutable live data. Then whenever we want to get downloaded current weather, we can simply return downloaded current weather. But what this will do, this line automatically casts the mutable live data to be only live data. So the client code requesting downloaded current weather will not be able to change it. This is pretty important because this way, the only place where we can mess with downloaded current weather value is right inside this class and nowhere else. This is the basic principle of encapsulation, which is a really good principle to have. So now we don't want to post value on downloaded current weather, but rather on underscore downloaded current weather. And here it's even possible to post value because previously it wasn't. And we want to post value of fetched current weather. And now whenever we catch an exception and that exception E is of type no connectivity exception, which we have created in this tutorial, then we simply want to lock an error for now. So lock E, the tag will be connectivity and the message will be no internet connection. And then we also want to pass in the exception itself so that we have the stack trace. All right, so now that we have all of the classes which are needed implemented, let's go to current weather fragment and let's demonstrate our current network data fetching setup. In the next part, we are actually going to create a repository so we won't have to do all of this trickery as I will show you now to get the network requests going. And we will also cache all of the network data inside the local SQL database. But for now, let's just work with what we have. So we are still going to need a Pixu Weather API service, but we are going to pass in the connectivity interceptor implementation. And again, this is not how you want to do it. But for now, just for the sake of an example, let's do it like this. So we also want to pass in a context, which will be this fragment dot context. And we also need to put two exclamation marks over here to make it non nullable Then we are going to create the weather network data source, so val, and this will be equal to weather network data source implementation again. And we want to pass in the created API service, which is a Pixel weather API service. And then straight away, let's observe the property on weather network data source. So we want to get the downloaded current weather and we want to observe and the lifecycle owner is this fragment for now. And the observer will be as follows. Basically, we want to copy this line of code where we are setting the text view and we can actually cut it from here and paste it over here. And we want to convert it to string because it is of type 
current weather response, which is from the observer. And in the launch on the global scope, which is not again a good practice to be working with global scope inside a fragment, but again, this is just for the sake of an example, we simply want to call weather network data source dot fetch current weather and the location will be London and the language uh, London if I could spell and the lo language code will be only EN for English. So now let's launch this app and we should see no difference with the previous app actually because we only changed the implementation but the functionality will stay the same. The only difference in the functionality will be that the app won't crash if we don't have an internet connection. So the app is already on this device and when we launch it, even when we don't have an internet connection, it is not going to crash and it only shows current because this is the default value of the text view. So that's pretty cool. We already aren't getting the app crash whenever we don't have an internet connection. But when we close the app and enable internet and then launch the app, it still works. So everything is working properly, even though we completely changed the underlying implementation where we have weather network data source and we are not calling functions on the Apixu weather API service directly. In the next part, we are going to be implementing the repository. So definitely subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button if you don't want to miss it. Remember that you can get the code from this tutorial by clicking on the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. If this video helped you, give it a like and also share it. If you have anything to say, leave it in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. My name on all of them is at resocoder and see you in the next video.